It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Bringing it back to some of those fundamental money decisions, Caleb on YouTube says, what is the best investment or account type to keep that three to six month emergency fund? I'm tempted to buy a low beta ETF. Mm. However, cash or I bond seems less risky. Ooh. Okay. So what do I do with my cash? And hey, I hear that these I bond things are pretty incredible right now. Yeah, and I've got a somewhat nuanced response on on the the whole cash and, and I bonds thing because I do think it's it, it it's this is this is a clunky analogy, but I think you'll understand what I'm saying here. Is that when, it depends on where you are in your wealth building mm-hmm. journey. Um, a younger version of myself, where I'm trying to build the basic foundation of get my first, you know, because maybe your your cash reserves is ten thousand dollars. And you're like, wow, I, you know, I got to come up with ten thousand dollars. That's not an easy task to do. Um, just like you would probably be willing, if a bank, you know, a local t- bank had a teaser rate for the first twenty five thousand dollars, they'd give you three and a half percent on your cash reserves. You probably, like, man, that that is that is well worth it for me to go put my ten thousand dollars over at that that local bank at three, you know, at three and a half percent. So then, when you hear about I bonds that are paying like nine point three percent right now. I mean, if that is where your cash reserves are, I'm not going to, because I think uh, me, Financial Mutant Brian, as I'm building that cash reserves, I would have probably taken advantage of sure. that. But but let me give you the downside. You have to buy that directly through the Treasury. Mm-hmm. So you go go Treasury. Is it TreasuryDirect.gov or is no, it Treasury.gov? I think it's Treasury Direct. So, but it, you have to go directly through their website. And then I've heard the complaints. It's not exactly the easiest website mm-hmm. to navigate. It's kind of clunky. Um, But it is one of those things where if you're maximizing your financial mutant, that makes sense. Where I run into issues, and this is why we typically point people back to the high-yielding FDIC-insured online savings accounts. You know, you think about um, what's Goldman's, Marcus? Marcus, um, Ally. Ally. You know, the reason I'm giving you these... These tried and true brands. These are this, these aren't endorsements. This is more for you just to go do your due diligence. But uh, these are the brands you see at the top of the. the if you went to Bankrate.com mm-hmm. to look at them, you'll see these consistently as one of the top performers. Whereas if you go with the teaser or the bank that has the highest, you might be surprised that they lower the rates after a few months. But here's back to the point of once your fi- your cash reserves are like maybe you need to have fifty thousand dollars in cash reserves mm-hmm. or even beyond fifty thousand. That I bond might offer a level of complexity because remember you have to open up an account over mm-hmm. at TreasuryDirect.gov, and then you're going to have to have still the rest of your because you only do ten thousand dollars. That's right. Um, per individual, you can do this, you know, hack where you get a uh, essentially another five thousand dollars if you get a tax refund. Yep. So, you, but but it's limited on how much you can put in. So it's back to seeming a lot like the teaser rate that the local bank is offering you to switch everything over. And when you look at it, you get excited because you see 9.3, but then you realize it's only on that $10,000. Mm-hmm. So this is less than a $1,000 decision. Early in your journey, that was worthwhile. Mm-hmm. But as you have more maturity and now you have multiple accounts, you're re- facing a lot of complexity with your finances. It, it might not be just like the teaser rate billboard that you see on your drive up to Nashville. You'd be like, yeah, that's a great rate, but I'm reading the fine print and I'm seeing, man, it's only on a, sm- a small percentage of the mm-hmm. assets. It's not guaranteed to last that long. You, you know, if you wouldn't switch all your money to that local bank for the teaser rate, I don't think you would go move and, and, and structure this complexity over at the I-bond, too. It, you know, it, it depends on where you are on your journey. Yeah, I have sort of two thoughts. You know, one in that first example, somebody starting out and maybe you have a $10,000 emergency fund. I don't know that I do a ten thousand all ten thousand dollars in that I bonds, right? Because one of the things your emergency fund needs to be is it needs to be there for you True. when you need to get to it. Well, you know, I bonds they have a holding period, you gotta hold them for a year, I think, right? And you just don't want to not be able to get your hands on those dollars if you need to get it quickly, like if you need to get to that money. Here's the other thing I thought that was interesting, Caleb asked. Well, what about a low beta ETF, right? Oh. So you see these sold all the time. I'm going to go buy really short-term bonds, or I'm going to buy some type of paper that's supposed to be really safe. The problem is, is your emergency fund should be there in the case of an emergency. Well, a lot of things, when bad things happen, they all tend to happen together. So the economy goes down, and then all of a sudden the job market, and then you lose your job. Well, then... 
What happens is these things that are supposed to be low beta or low volatility might not be quite as safe or low volatility as you thought. There are some things that have recently been touted as being stable that have proved to be less <laughs> than stable. No shade thrown, I'm just saying. Things that are sold as safe may not quite be as safe as you want. So I think your emergency fund should be liquid and available to you. So just like Brian said, high yield savings accounts or a savings account at the bank or something you get your hands on, I think would be the best bet. And then when you think about your portfolio, then you can decide, okay, what types of other risk reduced or risk off assets need to round out my portfolio. That's a different conversation than what's going on with the emergency fund. Yeah. Those are solid points, bro. Thanks, man. Solid points. I agree. <laughs> well, but, it, you know, but I guess the point, that short duration, I mean, that falls in the category of things that should be available. Mm -hmm. And I was just going to, because I was just going to add to the point, because I always like people to remember things, is that, remember, recessions, extrovert. Market volatility, extrovert. You know, if you think about real estate market, downturn, extrovert, these things all want to hang out with each oh, other. Oh, they like, they like hanging yeah, out. Yeah, they like hanging out. They're, they're, they're not they're loners. Out. These things don't like to hang out by themselves and sit in the corner. If you if you see a recession, a recession's like, he's it, definitely calling up on the phone and be like, hey, market downturn. You want to come over and <laughs> hang out? And he's like, yeah, sure, love to. And then he's calling up. He's going, hey. Housing, housing downturn, losing twenty percent. You want to hang out too? Because I'm having a, I'm having a meetup over here, and everybody's coming over there, hanging out, and having just a great barnstormer party all at the same time. So that's why you better have cash to make it through it.